So Google has finally decided to get the RCS ball moving. They're going to have to do it themselves, which has resulted in a limited rollout of rich communication services in the UK and France, likely ahead of a future worldwide rollout. Now we've heard that RCS chat is set to be iMessage for Android, and we've been using it for the past few days, so here is our lowdown. Let's get this out of the way first. RCS chat on Android is not quite iMessage for Android, but damn, is this a pretty solid first rollout. Firstly, at present, if you do have a dual SIM device, you won't be able to use RCS chat within Google Messages. I have only been able to get it activated on my Pixel devices too, but there are reports of RCS messaging working on Samsung phones and others, including the OnePlus 7 Pro. So how do we set RCS up and how well does it work in practice? Well, at the moment, you do need to use Google Messages or Samsung Messages with the universal profile activated and a live SIM card with a data connection. Once you're connected, it's pretty plain sailing. I'm just going to jump back in at this point just to clarify a few little things. At the moment, there is no support for RCS on iPhones. That does mean that you'll send traditional SMS and MMS messages from your Android phone to your friends on iOS. We don't actually know if Apple are going to support RCS in future either, but it is within their interest with SMS on its way out. We don't actually know when there's going to be a wider rollout of RCS to Google Messages in the US either. This is, seems to be just a limited rollout in UK and France. Obviously, we're much smaller markets and most people use WhatsApp and other online messaging clients. So it's kind of a good limited rollout for Google to really test how robust their services are. Another thing to note is that third party messaging applications will also be able to tap into this RCS protocol developed by Google. That does mean that apps like Textra will also be able to link in and you'll be able to RCS message each other with no problems. So there's just a few answers to a few common questions. If you've got any more, of course, stick them in the comments section below. But back to the video. There is no way to initially tell if a contact has RCS chat enabled though. It will, however, let you know if you're sending an SMS or MMS message via this small icon above the paper aeroplane. So once you've initiated a chat with a contact, RCS does take over much like it does with Apple's iMessage. A quick way to work out that you're sending RCS messages over SMS is that the small aeroplane won't have that SMS or MMS logo. Alternatively, you can head into the chat details. If you're using RCS, you're given the ability to only send SMS and MMS messages. You probably know that as SMS fallback. As standard, you will be asked to resend a message if it does fail to be delivered. SMS fallback can be activated if it fails. And I do know that this is the biggest component for many that want an iMessage competitor for Android. And don't worry, it is finally here. Like iMessage, you get typing notifications, although I do wish these were a little bit bigger, and read receipts, although you do need to open up the message itself, click the details in the dialog box to get more details, etc. Given that SMS and MMS do cost money in regions around the world, we may have migrated to other services like WhatsApp that allow you to send high quality video, images, GIFs and more for free. Google Messages with RCS enabled now finally allows that too. It does help that for the initiated, it's quite simple. Adding images, stickers, and more is quick and easy, whereas adding video and voice notes is pretty solid. There are file size limits for video though, which is capped at 105 megabytes. Videos bigger than that will need to be sent via a link to Google Drive or Google Photos, for instance. Voice notes for me are the biggest disappointment in this RCS rollout. The compression is pretty awful from the inbuilt messages voice note recorder. The net result is poor audio fidelity, and most of my advice would be to record externally and then send as an attachment. Luckily, RCS messages do allow you to send full attachments like PDFs, even APK files. Of course, many of these so-called features are not new to other apps, which is part of the problem in many regards. It's taken so long for RCS chat to come to fruition that it will be really hard to convince people to switch in many parts of the globe. There is also the problem with RCS not offering any sort of encryption, so are people willing to give up potential privacy for messaging features that are already available elsewhere and much more secure? That said, we could see some truly impressive integrations with Google services that really rival the apps and plugins that are already available on iMessage. If you cast your mind back to the ill-fated Allo, it had Google Assistant support for chats. We could actually see the benefit of its failure within RCS and Google Messages in the not too distant future too. While in Europe it might not be the biggest deal, in the US with SMS still reigning supreme, RCS chat might be the game changer you've been waiting for. Of course, I've only really scratched the surface of this early rollout. If you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter via the link in the description, and I'll do my very best to answer as many as humanly possible. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button and be sure to subscribe for all of our future content. But as always, this is Damien from 95 Google saying thanks again for watching, 
and I will speak to you later.